Welcome to another episode of the Dolman Law Group podcast. I'm Matt Dolman, managing partner of Dolman Law Group. Here with my special guest who's been here many times, Stan Guy. Hey, always a pleasure to be here. So tell us what we're going to be talking about today. Today we're talking about something called AFFF, and I think we refer to it as AFFF because it's called aqueous film-forming foam. And we just had a series of bloopers where I kept mispronouncing film-forming foam and saying it over and over again the wrong way. But AFFF is a firefighting retardant that we've been working on, and uh, it poses significant dangers to those who are in the firefighting industry, you know, commercial volunteer firefighters, as well as firefighters that are on you know, commercial airports, and there's plenty of them along with uh, both Naval and Air Force firefighters. And finally, those who live in properties that are adjacent or nearby airports, military bases. What we're worrying about now is that this, uh, you know, AFFF, which has known carcinogens, they're known as forever chemicals, and we'll get into that in a moment, they can get they can contaminate the local water supply through the aquifers. And we're still learning about the dangers, and they're, you know, the studies are ongoing, and it's a very fluid area of science and the law. But... Make no mistake about it, this might be the next frontier that could be almost as big as asbestos. You want to talk a little more about AFFF? Yeah, okay, we kind of back up to, you know, AFFF in and of itself, it's a fantastic product, okay? It is very effective at putting out fires that are based on fuels, aviation fuels, oil based fires. And what it does, it, picture, it just pictures like it tries to put a foam blanket over the chemical that's burning you spray it on the chemical it creates a foam blanket and which blocks out all the oxygen sure putting the fire out and for this it's it's fantastic it works great it's one of the best products for doing this so you you see what happens people are looking for a product they find something that works they begin embracing it and rolling it out okay then they start looking okay well hey something's happening what's going on here and you start looking deeper and the more stuff gets used they look deeper and deeper and realize oh man some of the chemicals in this aqueous film forming foam or a triple f are can they're carcinogens okay mm -hmm. some of this can really hurt people and they start looking and looking and suddenly realize oh my gosh the level of these chemicals in this foam is is unreal it's got a real potential to cause injury and then, like you brought up the second step, they look at the chemicals and go, my gosh, these are forever chemicals. And they're called forever chemicals because their half-life is so long, they don't really break down. Yeah, they don't break down the body. They don't break down the environment. And they last for many, many, many years, and God knows what they're going to do to you. And, and, what, and this is used, I mean, the FAA up until 2018 required airports to use this foam. Okay? Sure. And in 2018, they started looking at some of the stuff, saying, wait, we've got to back off. I think this foam is still actually used in a lot of military establishments and military bases because of its effectiveness, despite the fact that it's got such, you know, harm-causing and cancer-causing properties out there. Now, what's kind of gone on, and people think, okay, well, it's a fire. How often do you fight fires? No, the, the problem you've got. You train with it. Yeah, that's exactly mm -hmm. it. If you're a firefighter in an airport, your first rodeo is not going to be the 747 rolling down the runway on fire. You're going to have practice once a week for months and years on end using this foam on stuff. It's the same way at military bases. Yes. So you've got two different aspects of this. One, okay, during that process, you were exposed to the chemicals. Yep. Right. You're, while you're out there as a firefighter, you're doing this. You're spraying the foam. You, you're, you're getting exposed to the chemical. Over and over you're again. ingesting over and over. But here's a second problem. This is a forever chemical. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where you sprayed it, wherever you practice, is now an area that's also contaminated with this product. No question about it. Okay. And the workers. The workers, the people who cleaned it up. Now, let's take it one step further. It rains. What happens? Well, this stuff kind of moves. It contaminates the ground. Then it contaminates the groundwater. And you've sort of got a huge domino effect of this chemical that never goes away. Exactly. And it continues to move throughout the system. So now what we're finding is this is causing massive problems, okay? It's causing a ton of problems. One, if you own an airport, if which, which is only municipalities for the most part. Well, we're seeing them. They're actually filing yeah. lawsuits against the, the One just recently about Tampa Airport. If you yeah. look, it was, it was in the St. Pete Times, I believe, last week or two weeks ago, I read Tampa Airport's filing their lawsuit because now they've used this foam. they got to clean it up. They've got to clean up the ground. they got to clean up the area that was used. And this, 
if you've never done that, this is millions of dollars. Oh, remediation efforts, of course. I mean, it's not just, hey, we rents it off. It's you. If you're cleaning this soil, if you've got contaminated soil, you've actually got to take the soil out of there in drums. Yeah. Okay. Well, what do you do with the drums? You can't dump them somewhere because they're contaminated. Then you're just contaminating other soil. So you got to find somewhere to store all these drums of dirt. Okay, because there's no way to clean it. It's a forever chemical. And you've got the same thing going on with groundwater. It's okay, ridiculous. You're, they're pulling the groundwater out in these wells. It's all contaminated. What can you do with it? You can't pour it back on the ground. You can't pour it anywhere because it's going to get into other groundwater. So you got, one, there's a huge cost of removing this stuff. And then, two, because it's so contaminated, the storage cost associated with these things is off the charts. Yes. Not to mention the individual effect, you know, the... Uh the firefighters, but also the workers, the individuals, in, you know, in airports, for instance, those who are servicing the planes, those who may have been actually exposed to the elements itself, um, but not to mention the domino effect, you know, the slippery slope of it enters the aquifers, enters the drinking water, it's contaminated the nearby areas. How far does this actually reach? How many individuals have been exposed to these forever chemicals? And I think we're still learning about that. We're still learning, but I can tell you the Tampa Bay area is one of the hotbeds for this. Sure. Because we've got McDill. You got McDill and you got the commercial airport of Tampa. Right. right above McDill in particular, they've used a lot of AFFF down there. And there's really no civilians, okay? This is all military personnel when you're down there. So they're all getting involved. There's cleanup. There's practice. There's, it's not just, hey, there's 20 firefighters for the airport. No, we're training all kinds of military personnel on how to do this. They sure. rotate through the base. Someone's there for six months, and someone else comes in. they got to be trained on it. Mm -hmm. So the, vol the volume you're getting at these military institutions is massive and look at the planes they bring in like if you you've seen the air fest the amount of planes that come sure. in the amount of practice and testing they're doing there it's off the charts and and it's not their fault i mean they got to be ready if a plane goes down you got to be ready with the you, you know you got to be ready to deal with it at any moment yeah but we've got thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people in our local community that have been exposed to these foams have got carcinogenic chemicals in their body that they don't even know about. That they not to mention those who have been diagnosed with cancer but might not be able to relate it back. I'm not sure, you know, what may have caused the cancer. Well, if you actually worked in an airport, it's worth investigating. If you worked on a military base, it certainly is worth investigating. If you were a firefighter, it's not very difficult to show the causal link between a triple F and being that's a known carcinogen and how much you know of that carcinogen is actually active in AFFF and now your diagnosis of cancer the correlation is pretty obvious yeah and i'm gonna tell you there's certain types of cancers but if you're someone who's been diagnosed with a cancer okay and you worked anywhere on the exterior part of an airport whether it be baggage handling wherever you need to look into it okay 100 percent. if you're anyone who's been on mcdill air force base you're anyone who's worked in that establishment been around the airports been around where the planes are landing and you get cancer you need to look into it because they're starting to say the link between these chemicals and cancer looks strong okay and as the Very research strong. continues it's starting to show more and more of a link and the more we know about these chemicals and the more we're finding out, the more dangerous they seem. No question about it. I mean, it causes a bevy of different types of cancers. Uh, and I want to make sure that, you know, those who are listening out there who are eventually going to hear this podcast, we're going to invest in these cases nationwide. So we work with uh, a team of lawyers throughout the country. We have strategic relationships with of lawyers who are licensed in particular jurisdictions that will work with us on these cases. So we're investigating in these cases right now nationwide. Um, and there's I think that AFFF is going to explode as people, more people learn about this and the media continues to pick up on these lawsuits filed by municipalities against 3M and the other big manufacturers. It's kind of similar, you know, in, in, in what may hold a day in this type of litigation going forward is that, you know, 3M is a publicly traded company, no different than Bayer, who bought out Monsanto and they're dealing with Roundup. Eventually, you're hoping that the manufacturer is going to come to the table and realize not only their exposure, but that this is going to you know, inevitably affect stock prices and the shareholders are going to complain and then the corporate officers are going to be held accountable and it's going to force them to come to the table and deal with this in a realistic manner. And you know, we're very hopeful that they're going to uh, give out fair compensation for the, the victims. And there's going the victims, it's untold how many people have been exposed to this. Right, well, and then what you bring, you've got a very different sort of corporate reaction. When you've got a, a corporation that's losing money, 
Okay, that's one thing. They can deal with it however they want. When you get a corporation, a publicly traded company, someone, and they've said, look, your product's out there killing people. Yeah. Okay, you got to get on the front end of that because that is bad. Okay, it's not I made a business mistake. It's not, hey, I made a bad investment, which is, hey, that's a risk of business. You invest in something, that's, that's what, you know, you, you're sure. assuming a risk of loss. Okay, this is, I've created a product that's killing people. And creating an environmental disaster. Well, yeah, it, it, it's it, and that okay, no one's happy about. Mm -hmm. I don't care what business you're in. You're allowed to do what you want. You're allowed to make money. You're allowed to lose money. Yeah, they're not gonna look at it as a cost of doing business or a business loss. But if yeah, I find out you're doing something that's hurting me, that's hurting our community, that's hurting my environment, you better fix it. And that's the sort of attitude you see on these. Is the public as a whole holds co companies much more accountable when they do harm to the public, do harm to individuals, do harm to our environment than they do when they do harm to themselves. No one cares if they go no, bankrupt. It's a, it's a reptilian theory. Right. No one cares if they go bankrupt. Yep. I, I don't care if you lose money. Just don't pollute my community, okay? I don't want you put, putting a chemical somewhere my kid's going to be. You know? Said it. I can't say any better than that. Anything else in closing thoughts? You know, no, this is one thing I'll say. This is still a developing area, okay? Yeah. Uh, I can tell you, you want to get in on the front end of it. If you are experiencing any of this, you can feel free to call us at the Dolman Law Group. We're, we're looking into these claims. We're exploring these claims. We're pursuing these claims. And I can tell you, there is no one firm that's going to be doing this stuff alone. When yeah. you're dealing with these sort of big issues, these massive claims, it's a conglomerate of people that work together to bring these cases forward. Yep. And you just want to make sure you're getting with someone who knows what's going on, who's aware of the issues moving forward, and can get you with the right group of people to get you compensation for this claim. Because unlike your individual auto claim where it's a mono we mono, I'll see you in the courtroom, there are huge support groups behind each of these no question. groups making cases. So, Yeah, if you've been diagnosed with cancer and you're a commercial volunteer firefighter, you work on a military naval base, uh, you know, Air Force base, um, or you live in a property that's adjacent to a commercial airport, give us a ring, 727-451-6900. I don't care where in the country you are. I work with a team of, we work with a team of lawyers throughout the country who are licensed in many different jurisdictions, and we're going to work with them on your case. So, again, you can find more information at www.dlikeanddavidolmanlaw.com. I'm Matt Dolman, Managing Partner at Dolman Law Group. This is Stan Guype from Pop and Guype, and we work together on these claims. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, always a pleasure. Thank you, Stan, always.